I am a Nigerian, but what am I proud of? My country is in chaos. The thing is, I'm always forced to ask this question. Are we at war? For every nation undergoing a war, two things are common. Poverty and death. Poverty is a gigantic adversary to our nation, and it keeps swelling by the day. Nigeria is one of the five nations that has the highest number of poor in the world. More than 60% of our people live below poverty line. Seven out of every ten children are born into poverty and may never get out of it for the rest of their lives. Over 12 million youths, mostly educated and thoroughly productive, are unemployed. This is sad. For a nation that swims in billions of dollars yearly, the wealth of the nation is enjoyed by only a tiny fraction of the populace. She's so rich, but her people are suffering. They are desperately searching for a makeshift survival means, seeking miracles over mundane issues. 80% of those people are either hungry or sick. But is it salvation they need? Or this is just poverty and ignorance? That I eat it just and it back. My stomach is still worrying me, but I enjoy the fish. Huh? Switch fire, and I use, I use it to do some suya. Very delicious, you know? But you smell it. Yeah, what yeah, you smell it? This smell does not mean anything. We hope the fish will come as in another one will come outside again so that we can pounce on it very well. The poverty is so gnawing on the population, it began eating up through the classes. For as much as I know, middle class people are submerging poverty too. Because keeping up with the city life in our country is a grapple on an ocean of inconveniences. One out of every two educated Nigerians have been robbed before. Since the end of Biafra War, our roads have claimed almost as equal number of lives as the war itself. Our flight system is one of the scariest carousels in the world. These men have claimed more souls than the army of many nations around the world. The number of lives claimed by terrorism in Nigeria in the last four years is triple the number of lives claimed by terrorists in America in the last 40 years. In 1998, a pipeline explosion killed over 1,200 people at Jesse in Niger Delta. Since then, almost a dozen of a similar occurrence have taken place. This is the most satanic disaster our country faces. The sad part is, it has no face, and a thing without a face cannot be recorded, which means we can never surmise an appreciable figure to the number of lives this has taken, and still taken. So I am going to ask again, are we at war? But if our nation is at war, who is she fighting? Who is the villain? Who is the antagonist? Who is the enemy? Boko Haram, let's look into this. Through raids and bomb blasts, the insurgent group has been responsible for the deaths of over 15,000 Nigerians. And in 2014, the toll had increased dramatically. Their atrocities have displaced more than 6 million people from their homes. They are growing wider, bolder, and stronger. We have killed countless soldiers and we are going to kill more. Our strength and firepower is bigger than that of Nigeria. Nigeria is no longer a big deal to us as far as we are concerned. We will now comfortably confront the United States of America. So they are an enemy to be wary of. But are they responsible for road accidents, black magic, plane crash, kidnapping, robbery, and extreme poverty? No. Then who is? The government? Who is the government? <laughs> Our royal leaders? King, good luck, the Pele Jonathan. These folks have consistently abused the ideology of democracy in our nation. They run a complete monarchy system. 
Just from the way he has been politically sucking people lately, one wouldn't argue that fact. He even runs a monarchy system within his political party, a democratic party which they call People's Democratic Party. Such is why we witnessed the most shocking faction of a political party in our history. In 2011, this man dubiously begged his way into this current administration, starting with the people of his political party, who couldn't take more of his backstabbing, and then resolved into the dramatic faction. But the whole party palaver is not our only concern. This man begged us too, with the populace, and treating us with his shoeless story. He made 91 promises during his presidential campaign in 2011, and the International Press Center categorized all the promises under 13 subtitles. This means that we must provide skill and job opportunities for the youth. We must empower our women and above all, we must improve the lives of the urban and rural poor in all the 36 states of the Federation. I share this noble aspiration and pledge my personal commitment to it. Less than a year after we sympathized with his shoeless story and made him the president of the nation, this man gave Nigerians the saddest New Year celebration ever. He couldn't have picked a better time to stab us in the back. We sympathizers. On the 1st of January 2012, every Nigerian received a mighty blow in the face as our once shoeless leader announced the removal of four subsidy. This provoked the most widespread, the biggest and the most resolute rally this nation had ever seen. The movement bore millions of fervent protesters nationwide, bitter and angry citizens. But such a general and grand gesture never moved him. He was too stubborn to let the crowd of millions of people affect his decision. After we received the undeserving mighty blow in January 2012, our nation began a long hideous cruise through the ocean of tears and blood. Powered by the ghastly atrocities of insurgency, the consequences of rusty and immature infrastructure and the barbaric behavior of the government. A broken system superintended by a devious administration which is being led by an incompetent leader. Every time they ask this man about key issues affecting the nation, his response is always we are working on it. When will they finish working on these things and give Nigerians results? And if he's not saying we are working on it, He's blaming Nigerians or his enemies. Mr. President, the United States believes that the security forces in Nigeria are driving more people into the arms of Boko Haram. That the police, like in the last year or so, have killed more people than Boko Haram has. That is not correct. That is not correct. And I've said this several. Those are insinuations by some interest group. Well, Definitely the insinuations by some interest group. All right, so one of those interest groups is the State Department of the United States. So people come in to make some provocative statements. You even begin to ask whether they meant well for this country. That agriculture can make you have your own private jet. In fact, when you talk about crude oil stealing, yes, I agree with you. Frankly speaking, we want uh, the international community to support Nigeria because this stolen crude has been bought by refineries abroad and they know the crude oil was stolen. The world must condemn what is wrong. The stolen crude is refined abroad. $15-$20 billion today in Nigeria, the America will be as if this this will cut that money there. The crisis in, the, in developing countries will continue, whether at the primary school level, secondary school level, tertiary level. Those are things that you'll expect in all developing countries. I'm not saying we don't have issues of corruption, but that is not our number one problem. Corruption is as old as human race. At uh, the excesses of Boko Haram. Yes, Boko Haram has been there before I even came here as the vice president. If you will agree with me, within this period, you have never heard of bombings in Abuja. I don't know whether it's dead or alive. I don't know whether we get a lot. You know, journalists will even know more than us because you know how to. So some of you always talk to them. What exactly you are doing to help to stop Boko Haram? I know that you display state of emergency and all that. We are working very hard on that. We are yeah, working how very exactly, hard. sir? We are working very hard. And 3,000 people have died. Is it, is it, 
Uh, maybe you need to update your statistics. For those who know about terrorism, any country that is interested in terror, you only get out of it. This country could have been worse. And when I interviewed you three years ago, you said that the main issues for the people of Nigeria, electricity, power you talked about, well, today, those are still the same issues. Some 60% of the people of Nigeria don't have enough or regular power, regular electricity. I would have loved that you ask an ordinary Nigerian on the streets of Lagos, Abuja, or any other city this question about power. That is one area that Nigerians are quite pleased with the government, that our commitment to improve power is working. So if you are saying something different, I'm really surprised. That is one area, one area that even civil society members agree that government has kept faith, which is promised. It's a lie. Nothing's changed. The power is not improving at all. The promise is that we're structuring until the lights went out. Doing well. Most of our PDP states are doing well. In fact, the security challenges are less in the PDP states because of the commitment of the governors. Jonathan has said that he is only standing for one term. President Jonathan said, and not only once, twice, publicly, not only in Nigeria, outside Nigeria, that he will have one term. One of the things that is very important in the life of any man any man or any person that he might be a man or a person of his world. Your president visited our country with seven private jets, and that's never happened before. We're all excited. This is Nigeria. It's the country with the largest number of private jets. Seven private jets only. I know, there must be more. But for us still, that was wow. They came in their own jets. Everybody came in their own jet. We're talking about fuel subsidy. In 2009, this country paid 291 billion naira as subsidy for petroleum products. By 2011, this number had jumped to 2.7 trillion naira. There have been investigations. And what did we discover? That a lot of that money never went to fuel subsidy that was consumed by Nigerians. For decades, our nation had suffered from bad governance interminably. Our leaders had always been corrupt, but this man is a magnificent record breaker. His cluelessness is outrageous and alarming. Another few years with this man on that seat, we will all be dead. Apart from the fact that he doesn't care, he doesn't know. Do you know how many times this man had ignorantly embarrassed your nation out there? Do you know how dry the streets are? Do you know how pained people are? How the nation bleeds every day? Do you know how many Nigerians have died in these last few years? If you keep watching NTA, you will never know. This channel literally campaigns for a dubious government. Back then, beggars were only handicaps and old folks, but nowadays, people that have a job are begging too. It's crazy. If you think you're not one of them, then you are in graver danger because it means the beggars around you will eat you someday, either by robbery, black magic, or simply out of frustration. Did you ever say the anthem or the pledge? If you did, remember you also made an oath. And are you fulfilling that oath right now? Are you sitting there just complaining? Is that what makes you a Nigerian? How did we manage to let someone like this rule us this long in the first place? 
This man doesn't know jack about rolling. He's weak and slow. And we all know that. He can't even rule a school, talk of a nation. But what did we expect? Someone that had a major in zoology is only a professional herdsman. No wonder he sees Nigerians as less significant. In his mind, we are zoo animals. On a second note, can he even rule over animals when he couldn't even keep his wild dog tattered? The plants we are sharing, they are his god, 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 Nigerians, the people this nation buries every day are your brothers and sisters. If you don't do something about this now, the death toll will increase and it will definitely reach you. But don't just sit and complain, think and act. Don't just listen to hearsays or NTA. Go out there and seek the truth. It's the least you can do for your country. Reaching first-hand information is too convenient these days. So step out and get it. It is your nation, your land and your home. It is your people, your friends and your family. It is your system, your economy, and your money. It is all yours. Most importantly, it is our past and our future. So get up and authoritatively snatch it from the hand of these greedy demons. Come 2015, now is the time he is coming back to us to beg again. I don't know what story he's going to use for us this time, but we don't even care. Let's just kick him out and make him the scapegoat. Let him be the first incumbent president that will lose an election. This is the time for us to flex our muscles. They need to know that we know our rights and we will fight when we should. Once we use our might to displace this man in 2015, we will all protest to the new administration to probe him for every cowboy he stole and justice will prevail. This isn't only about punishing Jonathan, but also to let subsequent leaders know that we can deal with them if they mess up. Students, if this is happening now, what will happen when you are out there looking for a job? They tell you you are the leaders of tomorrow. No one becomes a leader without a fight. Except your name is good luck. Unemployed. I know I don't have to urge you. I know you despise this administration more than I do. Parents, you still cater for your children at the age of 30, 35. Who will cater for you when you're 70 and above? Don't put your mind on pensions. These freaks loot everything. So, the future of our nation lies in your hand. What will you do with it? Will you sit there or will you fight? If you choose to fight, then your number one weapon is your voice. Scream to the world. Spread the word. Let them know of the anti-Jonathan campaign. Rule with your voice. Rule with your voice. Nigerians, rule with your voice.